Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to go over, it's going to be a flip through of my everything journal and I'll explain what I mean by everything journal when I open it up. I know I was going to like do the whole setup here with you. This took me days to do and countless hours of video that I just don't have time to edit. So I decided to just knock it out, get as much of it done as I can, and then just do a flip through and explain to you like the process and how I did it. And that way, if there's anything in here, if there's any questions, just leave them down below. I'll answer them. It's super, super easy to do this. And this is totally specific on what type of a planner that you are, but this is what I feel like I need um, in order for me to just be more productive and be able to find everything that I need to find in one location. So anyway, this little thing right here, I'm going to explain it to you really quick before we open up the journal. So step one, when you're trying to figure out like these everything journals or any journal of any type, whatever type of a journal, bullet journal, memory keeping, whatever it is that you want to do, you need to kind of figure out what you need this to be. So in order to figure out what you need it to be, you need to kind of make yourself a graph of like, put yourself in the middle like this. So you put yourself in the middle and then you just start branching off from there like your categories of the things that you need in your journal, like the things that you actually have to have done, like the, the most important pages. And then from there, you can start branching out into other like subcategories of other things. And I know it looks chaotic when you look at it like this, but as you're filling it out, it'll start to make sense to you. And then you'll realize like, there's me time and with me time comes like family time and then like I have game night with the kids and then we've got a vacation planning and then the things that have to do with my shop and budgeting and etc home stuff and projects and there's just all these like different categories of things that I wanted to include in my everything journal and that's what I mean by everything like I want this journal to encompass all of these things in one place so I can stop hopping around from one planner to another from one journal to another does that mean that I'm going to stop using those no because most of the most of the things that I love about my planners is stickers <laughs> decorating them I don't necessarily like to use them that much because they're really not functionally good for me and I'm hoping that this will be so anyway once you get your list like this then it's time to start breaking it down into your categories so you can see here that I did some color coding with things that are monthly so these are things that will go in like a dashboard style or on your monthly calendar some weekly stuff and some daily stuff so that's how I made sure that each one of my pages had what I needed and then I came over here and I kind of went through where I wanted like the start of my journal to go all the way down to the different types of pages like what I needed on my calendar and these are here again with your your little color coat and they just dot them off and then decide exactly what pages they're going to go on and I'll explain this more when we get inside and then it goes all the way to the daily so decided to use the Archer and Olive. Um, this is the subscription that just came. This is the June subscription. So I loved the theme of the composition notebook. I thought that this was probably going to be the most versatile theme that I could use for this because I want each month to be a different theme. So this is hopefully going to last me more than three months, but if it doesn't, this will at least last me three months and then we'll move on to another journal afterwards. I feel like there's more than enough pages in here, but as I start looking at this, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Because at this point, yeah, it should last me three months because that's probably about 30 pages right there. So this should last me three months. We'll see what happens. But I've got like different collections that I had in mind. And so the first collection that I just started to go with was the one that I've been hanging on to for a while. And that's the coffee theme. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And the way that this book started out with me just putting my name at the top and then some of the decoration from the coffee thing, because I just think it's so, so pretty. And so I wanted some of that. And then this is just typical Archer and Olive with your, your gorgeous inside page. And then because this page is pretty useless for me, anyway, I decided to just decorate it with some more of the fantastic stuff. So this one came from Color Cafe. I also received quite a few other stickers from Color Cafe. So this is um, a UK-based shop. Um, it does take just a little bit to get to you, but she has some really fun coffee themed stuff. I also got a pin and some other things I absolutely love. Um, this was in a haul, a previous haul, so you probably remember it if you watch my hauls, but I thought this would be like a really pretty opener page and it kind of sets the tone for this month. Then when you open it up, this is where I decided, okay, now is when I'm going to get down to actually writing like something without just decorating. So this page is decoration because I just only needed half a page for this. And you'll see why I ended up doing it like this. But this is like my monthly dump. This is all of the things that are the most important things that I want to accomplish this month. And this is set up for the month of July. 
So I have this must this month's must do's. That's a tongue twister. Home projects that need to get done. Things that I absolutely have to do in my shop. And then some um, things I absolutely have to get done design wise. So there are time limits for a lot of this stuff. So that's why I wanted a page dedicated right at the front of the book so that I can just flip to it and then say, what do I need on my checklist? And then go down and check it off. Then when you go on to the next page, this is the monthly overview. And that's this right here. So when you look at your list and you're starting to kind of figure out what you're doing, this one is where everything in yellow needs to be cataloged on this page. So you can see I have quite a bit of things on here that I want to be able to put on the monthly layout. So, and then when you flip it over, calendar pages, a double monthly log day out, include enough space to write all of these things. So I need my, for my work days, vacation days, stuff that has to do with my job, website design stuff, like all of the things that I actually want to put on here. And then this is a double. So this is an A5 journal. Plenty big enough, I think, with me writing small to be able to put everything in all of these boxes that I need to. And then I just did a little bit of decoration along the outside just to make it look cohesive with the whole rest of the theme. But I think this will work out really well. Then we get into like these I call dashboard pages. And so each one of my categories, when I broke them down, I broke them down into different categories that I felt needed to go under like the monthly. So this isn't stuff that I'm going to do weekly or daily. These are just things that I need to get done in the month of July or things that I can like repopulate in the month of August, in the month of September, et cetera, et cetera, until they get completely done. So like 25 things before 25. I haven't populated the list yet, but I do have it. And I'm about six things down on this list so far of things that I've already completed. So I may not finish this by the end of 2025, but that's okay. This list idea came from Jasha Corinne. If you do not follow her over on YouTube, she's got a YouTube channel. She does a lot of live. She's got Facebook. She's got all kinds of things. But she is like the queen of journaling. So I follow her and a lot of my ideas for this came from her. So if you're looking for way more in depth, if you're looking for design ideas, if you're looking for page inspiration, Jashi Corinne over on um, YouTube is like the best resource I can possibly even tell you to go and look at. But dashboard ideas. So I have a home projects page. And what I did was I just put some washi tape at the top. And then this is sticker paper that I just cut into strips. And then I wrote with my ugly handwriting, like what this page was about right at the top. So boom, as soon as you open the page, you know exactly what it is. And this is that PET tape. Beautiful, gorgeous, bright, but under the lights, it's very shiny. So I'll try to make sure that there isn't as much shine so that you can see them without having so much glare. But under home projects, uh, under the home projects page, I wanted the actual project so that I can lay it out. And then I just use a highlighter to go through every other line. And that doesn't mean I'm only going to write on that line. It just helps me to kind of break up the page a little bit so it didn't like, look like there was so much white just glaring at me because I haven't actually done anything yet. And I've done this in my A6 and it really looks neat. Like when you write on it, it really looks like really nice when you have like these different um, colored rows behind what you're writing. I don't know why, but it just kind of brings the page together. So that's the only reason for it is just to make some visual interest on the page. Then I have like my, my must do stuff for my home projects, like painting the deck before the dang thing falls apart, you know, things like that. Like there's trees that have to come down before fire season starts. There's things that have to get done here. And then the future list is another Jessie Corinne future log. She has her future log. I made a future list for my home projects because there are some projects that are too big and probably not going to get done today, but they're on the list of things that absolutely have to get done at some point. So this is another one of those things that I can carry over month to month until I check the things off that need to be checked off. I already talked about the 25, 25. I love this PET tape. I love it. And you don't see a glare when you're at home, like you're seeing it because of all the lights above, but when you're at home writing, you don't see it. So it looks really nice. Okay, then I needed a page with just, so this is something that I have to get better at. And you guys know, you watch my hauls, you already know that I am a shopaholic. I love to shop. It is my therapy. It is my favorite thing to do. Um, yeah, and I gift a lot of what I buy to like my daughter and my friends. So it's not like I, I just shop and like hoard it. I don't have a hoarder house. If I don't use it, I gift it to other people. But I wanted to start keeping track of some of the things that I buy for the home and some of the things that I buy for the shop just so that I could have a visual reference every month of maybe be a little bit more accountable because if I don't see it, <laughs> then I don't really remember. And a lot of times packages just disappear. 
I never get them. And then I'll be like three months down the road. I'm like, wonder what happened to such and such a thing. I thought I bought something from so-and-so. Then I have to go back and I have to go look through all my receipts and try to figure out if I bought it or not. And then I have to go. And it's a big pain in the neck. So instead of having to do that right here, it has a whole page so that I know exactly who I bought from and when I bought, not necessarily how much I spent, but just what when I bought it and what company I bought it from, just so I can keep track of when they actually show up. Because I have had a couple of um, shops that I've bought from, never received a single thing from them. So these, this is a good way for me to stay accountable for the things that I purchase. Then our trip. So in 2025, we are... Wow. It's like only a few months away. <laughs> when I just said that, I was like, oh my gosh, it's already here. In uh, just a few months, we're taking our vacation. So there's things that I wanted to put on here to plan out. Not quite ready to buy the flight and the hotel and all that stuff. But what we are starting to do is populate the list of things that we need to buy for the trip. And I mean by big things, not little things. Um, this list is not going to be a packing list. This is the things I need to purchase. And then places that I want to visit for sure, like my top 10 places that I want to see while we're over in the UK hotel when we get there, flight information when we get there. But these are all things that are going to get done in July. So that's why I put them here. And then this list will just continue to populate over month to month as I need to add things. And it will change. The layout will change. So if I need more space for the hotel, it'll take up a whole column. I may take up two pages when it gets to the packing list, stuff like that. So the closer it gets, this page will change. But that's my vacation planning. So like I said, like this is totally dependent on you and what you need. You may not be taking a vacation, so you may not need a page like this. But if you did, this is what a good a good little layout would be. Then this one is more for my shop. So my shop needed a whole section all to itself. And it has nothing to do with these times. I just really, really loved the washi tape. This also came in the June Archer and Olive subscription. All of this coffee themed stuff that I have right here um, all came from Soto Studios. So it was an ad that I saw on uh, Facebook and I hauled it probably a couple months ago and I've been sitting on it waiting just to use it because I wanted like a whole journal of just the coffee stuff because it was absolutely gorgeous. And well, here it is. And it's a good thing I just hung on to it because this is fantastic. I love this. So for me, for stuff for the shop, um, I just titled it artwork at the top and then I just put like manufacturer. So for me, I make 99% of the stuff in house, but I can't make my own journals. I can't make my own um, washi tape, things like that. Things that I have to have actually manufactured. I can't make enamel pins. I can't do that at home. So manufacturing stuff is going to go here. And then there's some other ideas of some things that I want to do here. Then how much it cost me, what if it was billed yet, and when it was paid, I want to track that. Then when they send me tracking information, it's going to go here because some of these things that I order can take months. Um, washi tape notoriously takes about three months to come in. So having tracking and knowing like exactly when it left and so that you can track it all the way to your home. And then the ideas, like the ideas page is like just... Things that I come up with, themes, things that I want to try, stuff like that. Like the newest thing is the art prints and then I got the printer for it. And now, oh my gosh, the art prints are just unbelievable. It's just actually gorgeous. Like I'm not saying my artwork is gorgeous. I'm saying like the quality is gorgeous. Like, I don't know. Everybody's art is, you know, to each their own. I love what I doodle, but I consider them to be doodles, but they're super, super cute. So anyways, um, this is just like ideas, things that I want to kind of do. How's that? Then we have social media. Social media on here needed its own calendar. I am so bad, so, so bad with the social media stuff. And that is really the only way that any of you guys have any idea what's going on with me in my shop is if I do stuff on social media. So when I don't um, post anything that, and then I sit here and I wonder, well, why isn't anybody doing this? Or why isn't anybody doing that? It's because I'm not posting. So when I do post, I get engagement and you guys talk to me and you guys tell me things that you like or don't like or whatever. So it's, I need to be more accountable with the social media stuff. So I made a key with the four different social media platforms that I use regularly. And then each one of those I will put in here as I'm doing them. I can pre-plan some stuff or some things that might be just like filling it in to remind myself that I already did it. One of the things that I noticed about Instagram, and I don't know if you guys noticed this as well, but a lot of shops will repost the same things over and over again. I try not to do that because I feel like, well, they've already seen this, but I also have to remember that not everybody has always seen it because there's so much to see on Instagram. So sometimes double posting things, maybe something here and something here is not a bad thing. So I need to start like just being better 
Anyway, that's a whole nother story. If you're a social media person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're like crazy lady. What are you talking about? But that's what this is for right here. Just a calendar for social media. Then there's like a little divider between the monthly, these, I call these dashboard layouts, the monthly dashboard layouts for me specifically. If you have other things that you need to track monthly, then you can, you know, any one of these or any one of a billion of them on Jashi Corinne's um, YouTube channel are perfect examples of stuff from monthly. Then I made like this little page here is a divider between the monthly and the weekly. So I'm doing this monthly, daily, monthly, weekly, daily. So just so you know how this is going to lay out. So here's a little decorative page just to kind of split it up. And then it starts the weekly layouts. I went through my planners. I went through all of my planners and I looked for different layouts that I thought I might enjoy. And then I copied them in here. That is exactly what I did. So if you have a bunch of planners. How about you have a favorite planner or you have something like that? Like I just got a planner from Lights Planner Action and they have like all kinds of different layouts in there. And I wanted to try them out in my book and see if they worked for me um, in this layout. So this is a horizontal layout and you've just got like a section up at the top for this week. And then you've got all of your dailies. I tried not to put too much decoration on these pages, but then I started getting crazy with the de decoration because the kind of the point of the weekly is to write. <laughs> <laughs> write down the stuff that I need for my weekly. And if you go over here and you see weekly, there's a lot of pink in here. And there's a lot of pink in here that I didn't leave myself very much space for. So that's my bad. And I will uh, try to do better next month when I when I make these next month. I maybe not use quite so much decoration or maybe wait to decorate after I write. So if I only have a couple things to say on Monday, I could maybe put some stickers in here to kind of fill in the gaps instead of refilling in the gaps, if that makes sense. But you'll see what I mean by it kind of got a little crazy. Um, the decoration got a lot worse as it went along. <laughs> so this is a horizontal, I mean, a vertical spread with is just your basic vertical layout with Monday through Wednesday here, Thursday, Friday, and then the double split for the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then a whole lot of decoration along the edges. So I do have a lot of space here to write, um, but I will be writing around a lot of PET tape. So and as you can see, it's shiny PET tape. So, and you can really tell when I do this, how crappy I did with my <laughs> trimming of some of it, but it's okay. It's okay. Then this layout for this week. So I did five weeks because there's five weeks, weeks in July. So I did five different spreads. This one is like, all of your stuff is on top and then your little extras are at the bottom and your weekend is split between Saturday and Sunday. Totally messed this page up 100%. Had to go around it with all kinds of washi tape to try to fix it. All I can say is when you're laying down your layouts and you want to try something out that you've never done before, <clears throat> excuse me, I would suggest a pencil. A pencil, <laughs> like I learned after, but I did this in pen. The um, I used the Archer and Olive calligraphs, the ones that came in the July box, the, the June box. Sorry, excuse me, the June box. I used those, and that's pretty much what I used for most of the writing in here. Like all of this stuff is from that from that particular box, except for obviously these black up here. But yeah, I messed up the layout, so I ended up having to go over it. I ended up having to use black here so that you can actually see the dates because I didn't leave myself a spot to write, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was just a mess, but it's okay. What I really want is to just test the layout and see if this will work for me. I like this. There's a to-do section. I like that there's a separate notes section. And I like that there's a separate this week section, meaning like to do and this week could be interchangeable. They probably could be the same place. I could probably just make this page right here, take this out and just do to do and notes and be good. But I had this extra section over here, so I decided to just label it something. It may end up being a social media page thing. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Then on to this one. This one's kind of fun. So this side is a big to do, which for me, I feel like if this list is too big, I'm not going to do it. So this layout, as soon as I saw this giant space, I tried filling it in with stuff. Because I know me, and I know if this list is ridiculous, I just will be like, nope, can't do it. Too much. There's just too much there. So I started decorating it. I love the little 
the little collage right here um, and it kind of made this a little bit more doable but this is probably not the layout for me I can tell just by looking at it I've got my top three things this week some shop news here things that I need to purchase right here the to-do list is way too big and then this just this little one page horizontal for like notes or whatever is not really very much room in here to write but um, I just wanted to test it out you know I just grabbed a bunch of layouts and just wanted to try them out this is another one of those layouts that I think is really really fun and it is the last one. So this is the fifth one. And this one just has your vertical up at the top with your this week and then your Monday through Friday. And then you've got a big Saturday and Sunday. And because I don't work every single weekend, I feel like this one might be the best layout for me. And the reason why is because I need to write down a lot of things on the weekends. Uh, like I said, I don't work every single weekend, so a lot of these are working weekends for me here in the shop. So i uh, try to make the glare go away. So I think this one might actually be it, but we'll see. When I get to the end of July and I go to start setting up August, I will know what works and what doesn't. And at that time, I'll probably do another video um, where we can go over the things that worked and the things that didn't, the things that I'm going to change and that kind of stuff. Because I find it helpful not just for me, but for other people who are thinking about setting up any type of bullet journal or journal style. It's sometimes helpful to listen to somebody else talk about why something works and why it doesn't. I don't know. Uh, another, I'm going to shout her out one more time. Joshua Corinne, she does that all the time. Like when she sets up a new bullet journal, she goes over what worked for her the month before and what didn't and what she's going to change and why. And that really helped me narrow this down. Her channel literally laid me, like helped me narrow this journal down to an actual doable thing. Like this was just a massive project for me that I never thought I was going to be able to tackle. And so I could just, I'm just going to shout it out one more time to go check out her channel. If journaling or bullet journaling is something you're interested in. Dailies are going to start here. So you can see here is July 1st, which is a Monday. And I am going to do this layout here to start. I decided not to do 31 pages of this layout. I don't know if this is going to work. So I didn't want to like pigeonhole myself into having to use this layout for 31 days. So if this works out for me on July 1st, I will repeat it on July 2nd and I will maybe do a week of it and then see how it goes after a week. And then I will continue from there because this might not be big enough. This might be too big. This might not be big enough, you know what I mean? So I might need to adjust these, but I like having them separated into boxes and then being able to do like a little a little bit of decoration around them. I think that this style is going to work for me for my daily pages. I just don't know if the size of each box is going to work. So that's why I don't want to continue going on. So that is the entire thing. I'll flip back through it really quick so you can see all of the different pages that I did. Decorations, not that great. Um, still trying to get used to how to decorate when you have like not a lot of space but your deco is really big tried cutting things in half and like doing half and half on stuff so i didn't cover like an entire you know what i mean it's 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 difficult when your deco is big so just keep that in mind as well if you're using like an a5 size journal that you uh, may need deco that's not quite as large as this and i'm kind of excited because the new coco daisy is i think it's it's like a mermaid theme whatever and I was thinking I might use that one for August and then I'm going to use one of my own journaling kits because I've got the fall one coming up and I want to use the fall one in September so it's going to work out perfectly because I'll use this one for July I'll use the mermaid one in August and I'll use my fall one in the fall so anyway, just a real quick flip back through so you can see all the different pages and how I laid them out. If you have any questions at all, please just leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. I, if I remember, I will try to leave Joshi Corinne's um, YouTube channel linked down below as well so that you can go check out her videos. She is absolutely fantastic. Never met the girl, never talked to her before, but her videos are so, so helpful for me um, when it comes to this kind of stuff. So anyway, I can't shout her out enough. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.